Well, this is my favorite time out here in the garden. The chickens are eating their morning ferment. They don't get that every day. When we were healing our rooster up, we were doing it daily. So pardon all the mess, things have kind of been shuffled around a bit. But here we are, week three finale garden tour. So still not a whole lot happening. There's been a lot of work, but a lot of it's underneath. Strawberries are popping up. We're starting to work in a little bit of mulch. You just want to be careful with strawberries. We want the mulch in to drought proof them. These are all getting real happy. They should be sending runners out themselves in another few more weeks. Let's see, nothing's popping up yet over here. I see something, but that could just be a weed. Yeah, let me pull it up and take a peek. So this is our carrot bed. Hadn't been in long. Carrots take a bit to get, sto get started. So over here is our fully established new tree trunk bed. Now this tree is amazing. I know I've mentioned it before, but this tree used to be in the neighbor's yard over there. This is what whacked our house, but then we got a complete flip out of our house. But as you can see how hollow that is, and all the sludge, I had probably about 150 pounds of sludge last year that I worked into my garden beds, especially my strawberry, my strawberry, my tomato beds. <laughs> tomatoes are gold around here, strawberries and tomatoes. So anyway, aren't these pretty? This one here is gonna get something planted in it, and I don't know what, but they all have just a bit of character. There's one more that's on its way over that's gonna go into this spot right here, and it's got an owl. It looks like an owl. But look how this is all sinking in. This was up to here. It was about three feet above where the logs are. And with all the rain that we've had, it is now composting down, sinking down. Yep, another one, isn't that beautiful? Okay, so just to say what we got done. We've got all of our carrots, five varieties sowed here, one variety of spinach sown here. That was an accident. Um, I got Rachel going on some Asian spinach. She sewed the whole bed. I was like, way to go, girl. That was an evening, late evening into the night, kind of, not night late, but it was dark. It was before the time change. So nothing's popping up yet. Can't wait to show you that when it happens, but it takes a bit, and it hasn't been warm at all. It's just been wet and cold. Um, salad here. Greens and things are going in here this weekend. This was my second um, tree trunk bed. It's honestly, right now, it's still even my favorite and all the clear out it's just kind of laying everywhere we've had so much rain that we dash out of the yard as soon as we're done so this will probably be squash i don't really have any other plan for that um, this bed used to be a hodgepodge it's really tiny not much space we may expand it but we may just leave it the way it is it's kind of cute another tree trunk bed definitely permaculture right you take what you got and you turn it into something else I know there's lots of definitions of permaculture, but that right there is our blackberry just bursting wide open. I'll go over there and take a peek at that as a close-up. But right here, I have to say, what used to be my arch nemesis was this ugly tree over here that was petrified and we could not cut it down for anything. By burning it, we weakened it. And my husband was finally able to cut it down and then I took the chainsaw and tried to shape it up as best I could because some of it's still pretty petrified and we could hardly cut it. And that's going to be a planter for my patty pan white squash. And over here is about to get some work, but I got to wait. They're putting up a fence this weekend. Got a tiny bit more fencing to get out. There was some that was trapped here and some on the other end over there. But look at this. These are starting to green up. And that's going to finish getting taken down. It was so thick our chainsaw was having a hard time. So Keith came back out yesterday and did a little bit of work. And as we see, it's still sitting there. Whoops. Um... Anyway, we finally had a couple days with no rain. Praise the Lord. So we're going to be getting a good bit of work done on Saturday. Our pea um, wagons here all looking happy. But our fence line is going up right here. About 70 plus feet. Privacy fence. A couple friends of ours. Two men and some skills is all I got to say. Adam and Daniel, their brother-in-laws, they're amazing. And I'm gonna put their contact information probably in one of our next videos because I don't have any footage. I want you to see them in action. They're amazing. They have worked for us before, but they're friends for life, both of them. They're families, they're precious, they're lovers of God. 
and they only do amazing work and they're so cost effective so yep you're gonna you're gonna be real interested in their contact info all right so here we are one of three tomato beds this one's almost ready because we have to get our cattle panels up but that's not any hurry this won't be planted till late may maybe even early june depending on the temperatures the cool thing is all of our chives i think we planted six have come back up um, i've not had any other onions do that <laughs> but they did so i'm like super excited about it isn't that nice beautiful and so this bed has been burned we've worked in some um, horse manure and we will get that covered up with some hay the um, cattle panels are going to get raised my tomatoes last year went 12 foot high and as is this is about six foot so we're going to crank them up a good because you don't really need support on the lower part it's the upper so we're going to crank them up probably at least another foot and a half and got we've got some real sturdy wire I don't think zip ties would do that, but wire would totally do it. And this bed's not been planted yet. I'm not committed to what's going in here, but I've got lots of unusual oddball things and I'm not gonna do a whole bed of anything. And they're not unusual in the sense of food, but more unusual for us. So it's nothing that we've put in our diet a ton. Rutabaga is zero, but I've seen lots of cool recipes of using them and working them into your mashed potatoes or in place of mashed potatoes. I don't think I could pull off in this picky house in place of mashed potatoes. So that's probably what's going to go in here and some turnips. We haven't sown our beets. We've got quite a few things still left to sow, even though we've sowed a lot. And then of course, this potato bed is almost flat as a pancake now. When we first put our hay in, we put it up to right about here and it went down. Then we did it again and it went down. Then we planted them. But now with all this rain, this bed is probably at best five inches high, which is perfect. That's exactly what you want to happen. While we're over here, let's take a peek. Oh man, I forgot the apricot tree, but we'll slip over there and take a peek at that. So these, um, and I've got to look up the name. I won't probably say it right, but it's a Japanese technique of training your trees basically. I mean, you know, if you've seen a bonsai tree, you see the Japanese, they're just talented. They tell the trees what to do. So that's what we're doing. We're telling the trees what to do. I want my trees at full maturity to be picked by a child who's eight years old. Um, so that's my goal. Um, also, I don't want a massive amount of shade in my garden. Now, the way I've got all my trees positioned in this garden, it will not add shade to any of my beds. So I place them very carefully based on the way my son uh, the sun rises and falls on my garden bed or my beautiful secret garden okay so potato bed and this was just some surplus soil i just sprinkled it on top because obviously we're establishing a bed now we're going to probably as soon as they start to sprout i'm going to put a fish emulsion on there now i have it in a powdered form and i definitely need to link it at some point because i know i've mentioned it a couple times now but um i will link it i don't think i got it on amazon okay this is the third tomato bed that will have a little cucumber accent over here. So let's see if we come over here and do it. Up, oh, Mr. Rooster over there doing his business. We're hoping to hatch out some babies this year. We're only gonna hatch out the copper marins because that's what I wanna add to our flock. That was the whole reason we hatched them out in an incubator last year. So we've got a male and a female, and now we're hoping to do our own. So I know I've shown you this. I feel like I do a lot of repeating, but y'all have to forgive me. I am in my mid fifties and I've been this way my whole life. So I'm going to do my best. Um, so here's our wagon um, cattle panel that we put in the shape of a wagon. Uh, that's what I call it. Um, and I, I guess a lot of people just call them trellis or whatever, or they put them a little bit more straight up down. We wanted a wagon shape. So down here, we'll have four cucumbers. And over here on this bed, we'll do the same. Well, starting back up, hubby called. So this actually here is just... Um, Something that you grow, oh goodness, Becky, what was that called? I only grew it last year, but it's coming up really happy. Um, but it's just a chop and drop um, fertilizer. And I am drawing blank on the name, so we'll probably <laughs> just put the name over the screen when we edit and post this. Um, but it's great, it comes back. This is my first year for it to come back. Um, yeah, isn't that gorgeous? Wow, so it's just a fertilizer. You're growing it just for fertilizer, but it's a really pretty bushy plant. So it doesn't overtake, doesn't look at sent out any 
babies anywhere, but I would have liked if it had, because I chopped and dropped that right into my garden bed. And we're just trying to mulch back these weeds. We're putting cardboard down and then we'll put hay down. So we're just, the hay is on its way, the cardboard's down. Otherwise you get to pull them up and I really don't want to pull them up. And the, the grass we transplant, because we want grass out here, we don't want grass in here. So we're transplanting the grass, but the weeds we just suffocate. But here's more grass, because you know, these beds and everything down here has got six inches of wood chips, the entire garden. The ground, the beds, we did that all last year just to get going to get nutrients in this dead soil. So strawberry bed number three, looking amazing. And then we did some transplanting. So we've got a rose that I had in the front that honestly had too much shade and it was getting a fungus. And I thought it's full sun back here and I want it to be beautiful. This one got a really good trim. We're training this, this is a, this is a climbing one. So this whole trellis will be filled with that. Let me show you my trellis got some plans for this so we've got a nice little wind chime up here and that rose will climb probably won't get any further than up there but it might who knows but I'm gonna put some lights or something out here this summer we'll see because we spent a lot of time out here in the late evening my husband works pretty late but we always love to have outside time together all right well that's all that's going on in here let me show you my log strawberry that was one I showed you in the very beginning but look how happy it is and it looks like We've got the tree stump. That is not uncommon to have your tree stump try to produce a tree. So we'll pull that out because I don't want that competing with my strawberry. Isn't that pretty? Golly, it's gorgeous. The whole bed's gorgeous. <laughs> oh, and we love berries in this house. Oh, I was going to give you a peek of the blackberry over here as it's starting to pop open. Yep, power tools. We're about to make a shed at the back. So we've got somewhere. This little one here is a lot full of other things. Aren't they pretty? Oh my goodness. Wide awake and spring is upon us. And of course this bed is empty right now. So I can't wait to put something in there. We're thinking on what we're going to put in. We might make this an accent bed with some pretty bulbs just that are beautiful. Or we might plant food in there. I don't know. We'll see. All right, well, that's it for this end of the garden. I want to go out here and show you. Let's make a left turn. I showed you the peach tree over there in the corner with the training. I love this one. This one's actually probably my favorite as far as how the shape turned out. There is Nunu visiting the neighbor. I'm so excited. This house got flipped, and it looks cute. They've gotten all kinds of nice things. I'm hoping that the new neighbor is going to take over the jungle they have at the back of their yard. Whoa, it's just wild grapes. And when wild grapes get to do what they want, they are wild. <laughs> they take over, they climb over everything. So we just had a really low fence over here that, you know, it was just a mess. So anyway, so if you can see the shapes, you're gonna really be able to see the shapes as these green in, and they're obviously starting to green up this will be our second year with this one, and it was a two-year-old tree when we got it. So we might see a little fruit this year, maybe not. If we do, we will only allow it to set about three to five pieces of fruit. And then next year, we'll probably take every other blossom because you just want hardy fruit. You don't want your tree being overtaxed. But I don't know if you can see the shape, but this one's going out this way. This one's curling in, and we've got we're gonna, we've got a video in the process all about everything fruit trees, everything to do with orchard keeping. Um, and aren't they pretty? So some of them I tied to themselves. I kind of like how I'm doing it here, where I do it at the upper branch. I have done it in the lower, and I mean, you know, it's an experiment, right? This is a Japanese technique. Again, I'll put a link of something below. Not necessarily a link of how to do it, because I haven't been able to find much about this other than Paul with Back to Eden has done it. He said the way he does it is he lets his, um, you know, trees that start bearing fruit, he leaves fruit on them and the fruit laden trees pull. And he said, and it teaches the tree to submit because, you know, in the Garden of Eden, everything was put under Adam. So we are teaching these trees to submit to us. But my goal, of course, I already mentioned it earlier. I'm trying not to repeat myself is to make, and don't look at all the mess, all we can do is get out here and work and then run back in before the rain. But honestly, it's exactly what we want. So these are cattle panels to finish the potato bed. And I have some extra potatoes 
then I'm going to tuck in a few other places just for fun, just to see kind of how the potatoes grow in other spots. Hello, ladies. You know this is the sacred spot. You are not coming in here. So their ferment was a double. So that will last them till tomorrow. And the cool thing is it'll keep on fermenting. Um, and I crush up eggshells in there. So you'll have to check out. I don't think that's in my original how to ferment video. So we'll have to do a video on how to crush and recycle your eggshells. All right, so out here are the last of the fruit trees. So this is our Granny Smith and it is fully trained. Now this one, I'm not positive I like my shape, but they were really young branches and they're just real flimsy. They're really hard to get to cooperate. Whereas up here, these were firmer. All right, pick it back up. So this is some, um, and it's probably like drinking a lot of water, but these are some chocolate peppermints that we're transplanting. Um, they're just sitting here waiting on me and I'm gonna dump out the last couple days worth of rain. I don't want them to drown, but I'm certainly happy they got some watering because I intended to come over here and water them and I forgot. So I put hay on top so they wouldn't dry out and there we go. And then these are some blueberries. You can hardly see them, but they are transplanted and in good shape. We may expand blueberries over here at some point and add a couple more. Blueberries love lots of variety. All right, and there's our pear tree. There's not much to look at here. Um, just three and there was only a few branches and I pruned a bunch of stuff because when I get when you get a tree from Lowe's Even though they got a great warranty, they're not pruned So this one I'm hoping to get a couple of more leaders out so I can train them to give a little height to the tree But I'm actually okay that they're not super tall and I'm going to kind of keep them hemmed in I don't want these to get real big because I don't want to add shade but the way my Sun falls That all my trees are placed to where it will not interfere and not add shade to the garden and this is a grape that we bought last year. <clears throat> it never got planted, so I kind of just, I didn't know where I was going to put it. And I changed my mind with the other two. And the other two have no signs of life, even though they were really good, vibrant plants. Nothing has come of them. There's one. There's the other. They were not placed in a good spot. Now, this one might have survived. I don't know. We're going to have to give it a little bit longer before I decide that it's dead and buried. Let me see where we are. <laughs> Sorry, there it is. So when I trimmed it down, it had a little bit of green. And you know, you never know with plants. So our plan is to create an oasis up here. And that will be you'll see it in our future garden tours and we'll do how-to videos because we're going to make a really oh. massive grape trellis. We're not putting a ton of grapes up here, but you would be amazed at how just a few grapes can fill in a trellis. So, but I want mine to be very decorative. So we transplanted um, a hydrangea here. We're going to put a grape here, a grape here, and a grape here on the corner. The grill is getting oh. moved. Oh. And then this, we're going to put like a border here. And then we're gonna plant three more grapes over here. And then the trellis will be above. And then we're just gonna put some wire, some wood, make it pretty with the hopes of adding some shade because this back patio is unbearable. And as I talk to hubs about maybe making a little patio out here, a little covering, you know, it's budget, budget, budget. I'm like, I got it. Cause we've sunk a lot of money into all the things we're doing here. So yeah, miss, ignore all the ugly. All this got pulled off the wire rack that's going to be realigned and put inside the greenhouse once it's finished. So we'll have a how to make a greenhouse video soon. But all we did, oh goodness, I won't even tell you what we did, but it was super simple and it wasn't hard and the whole family got involved. But that'll be my wire racks to hold my plants. And hopefully they're going in this weekend. I usually don't wait till the beginning of April, usually on mid March. But I'm actually doing something different this year and I'm only doing these small cells because I want to go right from the small cells to the garden. So I was planning to plant later anyway. So anyway, and that greenhouse for us is going to be for seed starting and then winter, winter whatever, whatever I can grow in the winter in the greenhouse happily. So probably salad, you know, whatever. And we'll probably pull the racks in a little bit so they won't be so close to the edge. We'll see, we're gonna work on it and keep dreaming. And that's it for week three garden tour. Thank you kitties for my finale. Sir Bear, hi. How are you sweetie? There's a big white beautiful dog. 
She is gorgeous. What you doing? Go tell everybody what's up. Go tell everybody what's up. Yeah, I know. You ready for some loving. Yeah, you're a sweet girl.